Jaguars have been struggling finishing the entire season. Trevor gets hit. He's going to get sacked. He fumbles the football. It's intercepted. At some point, one of the offensive stars needs to step up and make some plays. Sun peeking through here. Fabio admiring Trevor Lawrence's hair. Trevor dies for the end zone. Touchdown. Trevor Lawrence has been ridiculous. They were three and seven. Didn't matter. How good is that? Let's go. Jags win the AFC South. So I want to put this into perspective for you. The last time the Jacksonville Jaguars were not drafting number one overall, we were all watching the draft and the draft was being done from home during COVID in April of 2020. Two straight number ones, then a playoff, and now picking 24 overall. Here's what our mocks have. Here's what Trent Baalke said today. We've done a lot of work on these guys. Our board is not laden with, with guys. I mean, we've got 127 names on the board right now it, it, that are draftable for us. You know, so when you figure 230-plus guys are getting drafted or two fit, whatever that number is, you look at that, you know, your, your odds you know, dwindle on having guys that are what you consider draftable as the, as the draft unfolds. So... Uh, the culture is huge. We spend a lot of time looking at these guys. Do they fit us? Do they not fit us? And there's a lot of guys that have t are taken off the board because they just don't fit our culture. They're good players, but they just don't fit what we're looking for. They've come a long way. They really have. Cam Wolf, Brian Baldinger here. They got in. They won a playoff game. They, they gave Kansas City a great fight there at Arrowhead. And now, Cam, they are sitting here picking 24th overall. We learn anything from Balky and Doug Peterson about where they may go with that pick? Yeah, Andrew, it's different for the Jaguars. For the first time in a long time, not at number one, instead at number 24. And they said they feel very good that they will have two or three players there at 24 that fit a combination of their needs and their values. And so let's play detective here. Doug Peterson was very clear that edge rusher and pass rush was a big need for this team. I remember being at games for the Jaguars late in last season, and the way their season ends against Kansas City, they could not get pass rush on Patrick Mahomes. They played the Chiefs twice last last year zero sacks in both of those games and so you'd love to see them get a pass rusher there uh if nolan smith from georgia's there that would be an excellent pick for them another kid from clemson miles murphy makes a lot of sense for them as well i got to look on the defensive side of the ball to improve this team to get them to the next level and they could also look in the defensive back room Doug Peterson told me in Indy they would love to find a guy who can be that third defensive back, maybe a slot corner, maybe a safety to help them in some of those matchups. And you just talk to a guy, Andrew and Brian Branch, who I think would be an excellent fit for them. A guy who can play slot, can play safety, maybe play some of those snaps against Travis Kelsey, who destroyed them in those two games there. And finally, if they did go on the offensive side of the ball, they love to get those guys in the trenches. There's a kid from Florida named Osiris Torrance. They were at Florida's Pro Day. They weren't there to see Anthony Richardson. Were they there to see Torrance or maybe one of those tackles fall to them? They have two tackles entering essentially the final year of their contract. Maybe they go a little bit of a long-term option there as well. Well, you covered a lot of ground there, Cam. And, you know, this is a talented team now. If you just look at the roster, they currently have nine number one former number one draft picks on the roster, including Calvin Ridley, which really solidifies the wide receiver room. They did lose Jawan Taylor in free agency. Nobody thought that they could keep him. Uh, there is Walker Little there who has played uh, left tackle at times. It was a high second round pick from Stanford that could play that. But it could be an offensive tackle at 24. It's a rich draft for tackles. Um, I always think that. Uh, secondary could be a real need for that team. I saw where Cynthia Freeland and DJ had a mock in Deontay Banks from Maryland uh, at the corner position. I think I believe everything Trent said, that they have a lot of guys on the board, that there's going to be two or three really good players. If they stay at 24, they have nine draft picks in this draft and be comfortable taking somebody there. Remember, they drafted two defensive players, Devin Lloyd and and Trayvon Walker in the first round a year ago. Of course, Luke Fortner was a third-round pick that started every game at center for him last year. So they had a good draft a year ago. You win a playoff game, you go to Kansas City and lose in the playoffs to the Super Bowl winners. Like, they're right on track. They just got to keep adding talent wherever it might be right now. And I think they're in a position to do that. And they have added talent um, in, in a very under-the-radar way with the Calvin Ridley 
signing who is in the building now this week, Cam. He was on the podium, and obviously it can't work out, like throw the football, catch the football thing right now, can't do the practice, but he is working out away from the facility with Trevor Lawrence. Andrew, two biggest things I've heard from talking to people in that building about Calvin Ridley is how eager he is and how much energy he's brought. This is a guy who has been away from football for the last two years, dealing with injury, you know, mental issues, his suspension from gambling, and now he's back. And he had some swagger and some confidence. He said, I'm a 1,400-yard receiver with a broken foot. He said he played most of that 2020 year with the Falcons with the broken foot, and he was out to prove that he is one of the best receivers in this league. And Doug Peterson was very encouraging encouraged seeing his receiver uh, out there with Trevor Lawrence. They've worked out three or four times this offseason before OTAs at a local high school. Doug Peterson kind of joked, I haven't seen him on the field. The rules say I can't see him out there. I can't get hands on him, but my quarterback is doing the work there, and so I believe in the, uh, the work that they're doing there. And you remember this Jaguars team that last month of the season, they started to get really hot on offense. They bring back that core of Christian Kirk, of Evan Ingram, who, by the way, is on the franchise tag. But Trent Baalke said today their goal was to get a long-term extension before training camp. And then you also have Zay Jones. You add Ridley to that mix. And now Trevor Lawrence has a really good quartet of pass catchers. And this is a team that should be in the mix with the Chiefs, with the teams in the AFC once again this season. Balky said they are trending in the right direction on a new long-term deal with Evan Engram. The deadline, July 17 for franchise tag players. Cam Wolf, Brian Baldinger. Thank you, sir.